before I get into the video, you guys, I just want to say that I made these videos really fast, and the power forward one is a little messed up because I forgot Kristaps initially. He's been playing really well, and I hadn't really been keeping track of that, but he would definitely be on this list, probably three, four, or five on it, but I didn't really make a decision. Also, this is before Kevin Love had that huge game, and I'm not sure if he would place on this list or not, but just think that he might be a fifth or a honorable mentor or something like that. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm out of town, and I made this shit really fast, so that's the reason why it didn't exactly click um but this is the top five power forwards list i'm about to get into but excluding chris Stops, who would definitely be on here and kevin love who maybe be on here but let's just say he's an honorable mention remember it's as of november 23rd made this list in november 23rd and then hopefully we can get this over with with centers tomorrow and uh get back to the normal videos enjoy the video y'all peace What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Kid Taj. We're going to do a top five power forwards so far this season video. We did point guard, shooting guards, and small forwards so far. Center is coming tomorrow, and it's really just all because, you know, I'm on vacation right now. This video is as of November 23rd. Just remember that. Keep that in mind during the video just because this is not up to date. Up to date a couple days ago when I made this, but I'm out of town, as I already said in past videos. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, by the way. Comment an idea down below if you have one. Subscribe if you're new. And... Also, I just want to say that uh, I have a gaming channel. Links in the description. Let's get going on this video, though. Paul Bosap is one of the most severely underrated players in the NBA. He always has been, and he probably always will be. And he checks in averaging 17 points, 8 rebounds, 1.6 steals, and 0.7 blocks. 45% from the field and 34% from the three-point line, helping lead Atlanta to a not bad at all 9-5 and five record for two-seed in the Eastern Conference. Paul Millsap, I always say that his stats don't reflect how great of a player he is, and his defensive numbers aren't as good as they were last year. His def defense has been pretty good, but he's leaving a lot of that to Dwight Howard because Howard is the main paint protector. You know, they don't have two small guys now. Dwight Howard is big. He's bigger than Al Horford was. He's a better rim protector than Al Horford was. And Paul Millsap can kind of play off him a little bit more, which is reducing his block numbers, giving them to Dwight Howard. But Paul Millsap has been great this season. He's been a great leader. His stats are a little bit down, but he's a team player. He doesn't really care about that stuff. He just wants to win, and he's helping this team do a good record. I think that's good enough for five on this list. At number four, we're going with Golden State Warriors forward Draymond Green. Green putting up 11 points, nine boards, and two blocks. Uh, helping lead his team to a 12-2 record so far as of today. The Warriors have been very good, and Dream on Green is an underrated part of that equation just because he does so much for the team in terms of playmaking. He can get other people's shots better than he can get himself a shot, which is something that we don't see from power forwards across the league and not anyone on this list because Dream on Green's passing is still underrated, averaging seven assists per game, three assists away from three assists and one rebound away from averaging a triple-double, which gotta say that's pretty crazy also he's averaging over two steals a game which is phenomenal his defense has been great so far this year he's picking up the slack for Sasa Pachulia in the paint without Bogut as that rim protector it's harder for the Warriors to stop guys from going in and getting layups in that paint because it's not exactly the most paint protected team in the NBA now green shooting percentages are down yes to 41 percent and 32 percent for the three-point line and field and three-point line respectively but what you got to think about is just why he would be higher on this list in a different year but you know the shooting percentages are down defense has been better and he's gunning for that defensive player of the year award which is definitely realistic if the golden state warriors can finish with a top 10 top 5 defense because he's getting it done on the defensive end so far stats are a little bit down but he's playing a team oriented game he's not a selfish player at least you know when it comes to his team so this guy is going to sacrifice his offense in order to boost his teammates because that's what a team player does, and that's what he's doing. At number three, we're going to be talking about San Antonio Spurs forward LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge is not a guy we talk about a lot just because he's, I don't know, he's a supporting player right now. And a second option on a very, very good Spurs team, 11-3 and three as of today, averaging 18 points, or as of November 23rd, I should say, because for y'all it's not November 23rd. 18 points per game, 7 rebounds. The rebounds are down a little bit. That should go up but i not sure what's going on there a block and a steal and he's at shooting 47 and a half percent from the field and 58 percent from three yes he's been fantastic doesn't shoot a lot of threes uh but hey you know he's making them when he takes them i guess is what you can say aldridge 
doing a pretty good job as a second option. I think if he gets the ball more, he scores more points, but he's definitely one of those big time players. He can make big shots. He's an extremely consistent mid-range jump shooter, and he's helping his team win games. That's the bottom line. At number two, we got a guy who's in the MVP conversation this year. It's Blake Griffin. Blake. Clippers forward has been solid as a rock so far. 13 and 3 are the Clippers. No, 13 and 2. What am I talking about? As of November 23rd, the Clippers are 13 and 2, and Blake Griffin is averaging 22 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, and a steal, shooting 49% from the field. And he doesn't really shoot threes, so I'm not going to talk about the three point percentage. But Blake Griffin has done a great job so far this year at just winning games and helping his team win games. He's a power presence, he attracts a lot of attention, and he's one of the best big man passers in the league behind that of Draymond Green, who's probably the best, at least right now, averaging seven assists per game. But Blake Griffin and Chris Paul have been running the show for the Clippers and doing a phenomenal job of it. And they're going to continue to do it. And if they do, hey, He's just going to get higher on that MVP conversation because he's putting up decent numbers. Got to say, his team is winning games, and it's because of him and CP3, and that whole team is playing well, but led by him and CP3, so he's up there in that conversation. Now we're going up to number one, and he is not on a very good team, at least not record-wise. They've been great as of late. The New Orleans Pelicans have. They've won a couple in a row now, and Anthony Davis has been the best player on that team all season long. He's been the best power forward all season long. Away f all from putting up insane numbers, being a beast on both ends of the floor. This guy is the best big man in the NBA, I think. I don't think there's any doubt about it, any discussion about Anthony Davis as the best big man in the league, averaging over 30 points, almost 11 rebounds, three blocks, two assists, two steals, shooting 50% from the field this season. This guy has been phenomenal. Offense, defense, he does it all. His team's been winning games recently, but his stats are too good to ignore. I could not possibly put another player over him, even if this team had only won one or two games. This is still the best big man in the NBA. This guy's stats are absolutely insane. I'll say it again, 30 points, 11 rebounds, three blocks, two assists, two steals. That's just not something you see from big man in the NBA, but it's happening with Anthony Davis. He's been absolutely incredible, and the Pelicans are now winning games. They look really good with Drew Holiday back, and he only helps Anthony Davis be a better player, and he's doing it all efficiently. 2.4 turnovers, and he's shooting over 50% from the field, shooting 21-plus shots per game. Hey, that's absolutely incredible, and along with all the amazing stats this guy puts up, gotta say... Anthony Davis has been the man so far and the best power forward this season. That's going to do it all for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Comment and down below. And I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.